I'm going to be showing you my entire Van Cleef & Arpels collection. What are the best and worst pieces to get? Hi my loves, welcome back. So this has been a really highly requested video. The question I get the most from you guys through DMs or emails and messages is, Mel, what should I get for my first or second Van Cleef & Arpels piece? Do you recommend this stone over the other? I've actually created a, something very visual and it's based on the Friedrich Moore scale. So I'm gonna be going into that in detail a bit later. I also, as you can see behind me, have a Van Cleef & Arpels unboxing. I've waited ages for this piece. And that piece came a bit late, but it was to celebrate my seven years on YouTube, which happened last month, but still better late than never to receive it. So first of all, I'm gonna start off with the unboxings and also some of my new in fine jewelry pieces. So before we get into the Van Cleef & Arpels unboxing, let me show you some of the, my new ins that I've got recently. I'm actually wearing them now. So on my ears, as you can see, and I will do close ups of everything, I'm wearing these gorgeous sage earrings. So if you like floral like me, this is sort of floral inspired. It actually kind of looks a little bit like a clover, like the Van Cleef and Arpels clovers, but this one's just more elongated and it has diamonds. As you guys may already know, diamond is the hardest natural mineral. It actually ranks 10 on the Moore's scale. And so that means that it's just, yeah, nothing else can scratch a diamond. But anyway, I love the sparkle of diamonds and these ones are from Ideal. I have mentioned Ideal so many times before. So thank you to Ideal for part sponsoring this segment of the video. They have in the recent months put in so many new pieces and I have been enjoying mine so much. So the whole concept behind Ideal, for those of you that may not have heard of them, is is that they are so versatile. They use lab-grown diamonds and there is a big misconception out there, though I think it's getting better, but lab-grown diamonds and natural-grown diamonds in the earth are exactly the same. So chemically, physically, optically, exactly the same. It's just that one takes millions of years to produce and one is produced in a lab. That's why it's called lab-grown diamonds. But did you know that lab-grown diamonds also rank 10 in the Moore scale because like I said, it's chemically the same. So all their jewelry is lab grown diamonds and what makes that so good is that it makes diamond jewelry so much more affordable. But on the other ear, I'm wearing another piece. So on this ear, I actually have one of their newer designs, which is called the Kaya. It's based on their bestseller, the Lucia, and it's like these floating, gorgeous, pear-shaped diamonds that just sit under the earlobe. And what I love about this is it is adjustable, so it doesn't matter if you have thin or thicker earlobes, it all works. And you can actually pick the size of your diamond stud, so there's petite, there's medium, and there's big. I've got different sizes, but as you can see on this ear, just to give you a quick size comparison, this is the big versus the petite. But on their website, when you have a look, they have all model pictures, and it's so easy to shop. So why I love Ideal is that that it's so versatile because you can mix and match. So you start with like a stud and then these add-ons, you can just buy one side or the other. It's just so versatile and their whole modularity concept, they were like one of the first in the market with these pieces. So if you're like me and you like to change things up a bit, I just love how you can wear one one side and one the other. This one I did pick in gold. Uh, they come, the jewelry, you can pick white gold, yellow gold, or rose gold. So something for everyone. And you can just build your collection and you can just wear things so many different ways. All their jewelry is actually handmade in Antwerp in Belgium. And did you know, fun fact, that Antwerp is actually the diamond capital of the world. So another piece I picked from them is this gorgeous pear-shaped necklace, which is called the Ava. I've actually paired it with my Van Cleef & Arpels holiday edition pendant, which is from last year. And I'll go into this one a little bit later. So if you are wanting fine jewelry 
to wear every day. These pieces you don't need to take off. They're very comfortable to sleep in. You can shower with them. That's because they're solid 14 karat gold, also sustainable or green gold. And their diamonds, since they're grown in the lab, are obviously conflict free as well. Another couple of pieces that I picked, and I wanna show you this exclusive, just for the Mim fam. So in here, this is a solid wood treasure tray. It is beautiful quality in walnut. I've also got some of my ideal pieces which are on heavy rotation. So another relatively new one that I also got are hoops. You guys know I love hoops. But these ones have all diamonds. Well, it's kind of like, I guess you would call it parve because it's all little diamonds here. And I picked these ones in their rose gold. And so for those of you that may not like big hoops, but you still want a little bit of sparkle, these are gonna be perfect. And that's why I picked a pair for these. So this is the add-on. So all you need to do is you just slide it in whatever uh, hole suits your earlobe and you can wear it. So this is with the larger diamond stud and I just love that they're so classic yet modern and timeless. The other piece from this jewelry tray I want to show you and I've been wearing these so much in a lot of my past videos is their solo diamond uh, stud. But this one is the new version because this is in 0.5 so this one definitely looks a lot bigger previously they only offered it as you can see this is 0.5 oh i was i forgot to mention the ava is also 0.5 so they're starting to develop more and more bigger carrot pieces which i love this one here with the ava you can actually wear vertically like this which is very classic but for more modern twists you can actually wear it horizontally as well but of course a solo diamond stud is just a forever classic. So if you've been waiting for a piece that is a little bit bigger in terms of carrot, go for this. We all know that designer jewelry is marked up because of the name, but I think with a simple classic piece like this, like I love that lab grown diamonds are so, so much cheaper than earth grown diamonds. And they have the same sparkle, the same shine. Actually all their diamonds are the highest quality in terms of color. You know, it's like D to G, excellent cut, and the clarity is always like VS and above. They grade lab-grown diamonds exactly the same as they would, you know, earth-grown or mined diamonds. So just another fact for you. So I just quickly wanted to show you some of those pieces and tell you that whoever, actually, all my pieces, I've got a favorites page. You've got to click the secret link below. It will show you all, you know, Mim's favorites. And for any order that you place, so it could be any earring combination, you could pick, you know, these studs and just one side of this sage, for example, or this necklace. Any necklace or earring combination you pick, you get this treasure tray. And normally this treasure tray costs like 250 AUD. As I said, it's solid wood. So that's just for the Mim Fam. And yes, you can still use my regular discount to get 10% off and you get this tray as well, which is, I just think a really, really nice, beautiful tray to hold some of the pieces that you've got on higher rotation in. So you can click the link below. It's a secret link only for the Mim Fam. So I just wanna thank Ideal so much. You guys always ask for me to get you exclusive items. So that is an exclusive just for you. Okay, let's get to the Van Cleef and Arpels unboxing. So. Let's just, oh, these are just the boxes that the ideal pieces come in. Very, very cute. But this is the one I want to show you. In this big box, I got, and can I just say, guys, I've been waiting ages for this because apparently Van Cleef and Arpels has had a shortage. So in this box here, Oh, did you know that Van Cleef and Arpels recently changed their packaging? I opted for their older box because the newer ones, the boxes look different, like the ribbon is attached and it's more simple. So anyway, in here, I got... Dun, dun, dun. Ta -da! <gasps> oh my goodness, guys. These are the Malachite three motif Alumbra earrings. 
are they not stunning? Everyone knows green is one of my favorite colors, especially this emerald green. And Malachite, yeah, my very first piece from Van Cleef. I actually didn't go down the traditional um, onyx or white mother of pearl. I started off with the magic size of these. And I love this color so, so much. And these are definitely dressier. They definitely cost a lot more. I'll share the price in a second. But I just love how they look. Like, don't they just make such a statement? So if you haven't realized already, the three motifs and even the two motif uh, Alumbra earrings, there's been a huge worldwide shortage. I actually even want the versions that have Grey Mother of Pearl, White Mother of Pearl and Onyx but I'm still on the waiting list for them and you can't even order them. So when I asked for these and I still had to wait and these came in, I was like, yes, yes, and yes. And the thing with Malachite is that, I mean, just look at them. I already showed you mod shots, but they're just so stunning. Like green is my power color, I've said it before. Anyway, Malachite, did you know Malachite actually ranks one of the lowest on the Moore scale? You may have heard that Malachite is not a very scratch resistant stone and you are correct. I will go into that more in depth when I rank it all. I actually rank all the stones for you. So some people may say, well, Mel, isn't this the worst piece to get? I think worst is a relative term because because malachite, even though it is more delicate, if you love it, then you should get it. But you do need to be more careful. But if you're the type of person that you don't like to take off your jewelry or, you know, you want jewelry where just say it gets a little bit of water on it and it doesn't ruin the stone, there are other options you can get from Van Cleef, which I'm going to go into. But this one is super, super delicate. You can't get this one wet or dull the stone. And... Yeah, the beauty of this stone is the different striations in it. It's like every piece is unique. And if you see some curves in it, that's all natural. So that is my new Malachite earrings. And that's to celebrate my seven years on YouTube. I can't believe I've been on here for seven years. You know what? Van Cleef and Appels are due to have a price increase really soon. I don't think it's a huge amount. I think it's gonna vary amongst categories. But I think around mid-June, guys, so if you're looking to buy a Van Cleef and Arpels piece, just get it now because I think it's going up around 5%. Not a huge amount, but still, when it comes to these pieces, saving $500, a couple of thousand dollars is still a lot. And these earrings cost $16,000 Australian dollars. In US, it costs 10,100 excluding tax. So depending on where you are, you need to add tax on. So Australia and the US are very similar in terms of pricing. If I convert it, I think US ends up being a touch more, but it depends on the state you live in because I know all the states have different, you know, varying tax percentages. So very, very expensive, but I love these so much. No regrets. I would add more of these if I could. But anyway, I love these. So this is my gorgeous three motif earrings to add to my collection. So now let's go look at my collection together. So let's start off with my five motif Alhambra bracelets. And I'm just gonna go through each category quickly and then let's talk about the best and worst pieces or in this case, which one is the most scratch resistant and least scratch resistant? And I'll start off with my newest one, which again is in Malachite. This was what I got myself for Mother's Day. I just love green. I love, love, love green. And honestly, this is just pops against the skin. Isn't it beautiful? And the one I got before that one, I believe was the white gold. Gilche or Gioche, I think that's how you say it in French. And I just love the cool tone of this bracelet. I don't have that much white gold, but this is just stunning. I mean, look at the sunburst detail. So Gioche is like a very old technique. I think they've been using it in jewelry making for ages, but basically a machine has to like engrave all this in and it's quite intricate work. And that's why you'll find these pieces more expensive than the regular stones. And then I believe I got the gold one. 
So this is the gold. Honestly, both are absolutely beautiful. That's what that looks like. The five motif bracelets, honestly, that's another tip. In terms of best bang for your buck, you will find that the five motif bracelets are more worth it if you're talking about the stones. Because for example, if you were to buy like this size, vintage size pendant, it would cost like even double the amount, the bracelet costs less, but you get five motifs instead of one. Does that make sense? So that's why I can understand why the bracelets are probably the most popular. And then after that, this is my blue agate or blue agate. And look at the blue. The blue is just stunning as well. I mean, for me, I prefer the malachite. I don't know why I bought the blue first, but I just fell in love with it that day. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful stone. So all blue lovers, that's what that looks like. And then my very first piece was the carnelian. And this is the carnelian on my wrist. With the carnelian, it actually does vary. Actually, the carnelian, all the stones besides black, they do vary with each stone. So for this particular one, the carnelian, I chose a darker red. It can come in all different shades. Likewise, even with the blue, they may not have had as much variations in the blue, but there are variations. And that's why I always recommend if you are going to buy a five motif, not the Gyosh collection, but these ones go into the boutique because if they have a couple, you can compare the different stones, both in uniformity. So you make sure, you know, the five are quite uniform and in terms of coloring, because they can vary. So that's just a little tip for you. So I own five. I would actually love to add Chalcedony next, which is the one that's sort of like a bit light in blue. And interesting fact with the Chalcedony, that only is available in white gold. Now, in terms of a necklace, I only have one, but it is a super special one that I bought when I was in Seoul last year. And this is the limited edition 20 motif Alumbra necklace. Let me just show you a close up. Rose gold, gyosh, and white mother of pearl. And honestly, even in mother of pearl, though you think it's kind of white, because it's sort of iridescent, I don't think you can see this. Let me try and get up close. This one here, it actually has a slight pinky and greeny tone to mine, but even in the Mother of Pearl, there's different variations. So this was, yeah, a Soul exclusive. You only can get it in the Soul store. There was only a limited number and I just happened to be there at the right time. So I would love to add a 10 motif as well. Okay, so moving along to my earrings. As you can see, my collection is very Alhambra heavy but I would absolutely love to add more of the other collections. The only thing that I do own in my earrings is the Frivol, which is the larger size. Again, Van Cleef is always nature inspired. So these are the large models. I've worn these heaps. Now I love these, but can I just say they get marks on them so easily. And especially if you get the Frivol in the ring, this metal, cause it's 18 karat gold, scratches. So just be aware of that because if you want it in a ring, because you use your hands more, it will scratch. But on the ears, I haven't really got any scratches and I've worn these a ton. I wouldn't mind even adding the white gold versions of these as well. So that's the Frivol. And then the rest are all, from the Alhambra collection. My favorite size, which I've mentioned so many times, are the Magics. This was my very first pair back in, I think January, 2018. So these are the Magics as well. And as you can see, mine, despite wearing them, you guys know how many times I've worn them. The luster is still great. They haven't dulled but when I go into the hardness and stuff, you do need to take more care of them. I've never ever got these wet, like not even like a drop of water. So likewise with Malachite, if you, you know, you do have it on as a bracelet or especially rings, you just gotta be super, super, super careful. I also have them in Mother of Pearl. So Mother of Pearl, I would say, is probably the most popular stone. And it's just so classy. I mean, white goes with everything. But uh, did you know Mother of Pearl is on the Moore scale? It ranks the lowest on the Moore scale. But a bit more on that in a bit. And then I have a two motif earring, and which is this one here. 
And this is the two motif, Tiger's Eye and Carnelian. These are so hard to get now as well. I want more two motif earrings, but these are stunners and they just look really great against my skin tone. And then I also got the vintage size, white gold gyosh, and that is what they look like. Like normally I prefer magic size, but the vintage size suits most earlobes and the vintage size is the original size. So this one here, because it's just so shiny, it actually looks great just and this size. I don't know if it would have been too much in the Magic. So the Alhambra collection comes in three sizes, Magic, Vintage, and the only sweet piece that I do own is in the Pendant. This is just a quick size comparison to show you. A lot of the necklaces, bracelets, and earrings come in all three sizes. And then, of course, my newest addition, the three motif in the Malachite, as you can see here. In terms of necklaces, sh sorry, I should have said I do have pendants, but in terms of necklaces like 10 or 20 motif, this is the only one I own. But let me get this tray out. Okay, so this is the tray. By the way, I'm using stackers trays. I find them just great. So I'll link some below as well. So all my pendants, except for this one I just showed you, this is in the Sweet Mother of Pearl. They wear this a lot just to layer with. The pendants that I've got are the ones that are the limited edition holiday ones. So this one was the one from 2020, which is the white gyosh with a center diamond. So you only can get these. I think they released them around the start of October. So this was the 2020 version. And then the 2021 version was this one here, which is the Rhodonite. So this one here as well varies a lot on the stone. As you can see, this one's got a few sort of speckling through it. I loved this one when my essay showed it to me, but this one I saw quite a lot of variations in color as well. So center diamond, rose gold, and this was the 2021. And then last year's version was the light green Celadon. So it kind of looks like Tiffany blue, but they call it light green Celadon. Again, white gold and with a center diamond. So those are the only three I have. Some people love these limited edition ones so much they collect them all, but I just kind of get the ones I like. So let's see what this year's one is. I'm very, very interested. So those are my four pendants that I own. Okay, so I'm gonna put my table up now. Feel free to screenshot this. I double checked all of this on various websites. So basically the Moore scale is like a scratchability hardness scale. And this scale measures like the minerals or stones ability to resist scratching. So like I said to you before, as you can see, 10 is diamonds and even lab grown diamonds. So let's start off with the lowest. And as I said before, mother of pearl, or gray mother of pearl. And as you can see along the sides, I also put like common objects. This is as delicate, like a fingernail can scratch this. This rates like 2.5 to four on the Moore's scale. So even though this, I would say this is the most popular stone from Van Cleef, it, they don't recommend getting wet. But this one you would think mother of pearl since it's formed in water would be, you know, water resistant, right? But no, they don't recommend you to wear this in the shower or anything. But I have heard friends wearing their ones in the shower and what happens with the mother of pearl is that it will shrink over time. Like I'm sure if you splash water on it and dry it quickly, it will be fine. But in terms of scratchability, like if I got my malachite and I tried to scratch this, it would scratch this but the mother of pearl would not scratch the malachite. So that's what that means. So hardness is just one form to measure durability, but this is sort of like a very international scale that Friedrich Morse developed. And it's good, you know, just to know the gemstone's hardness. So white mother of pearl and mother of pearl rank the lowest. Next is malachite. So malachite, again, is not, a very hard stone. It is very susceptible to water. For that reason, I haven't gotten a ring. I find earrings okay because they're just, you know, on your ear. So it's not like, you know, you're wearing it a lot, but I haven't worn my Malachite bracelet that much yet because I only just got it. 
So I think that even perspiration, just say you live in a really humid climate, even perspiration can dull the stones. So just watch out for that. So for that reason, a lot of people saying malachite is like one of the worst pieces you can get. So in terms of scratchability, yes, it is worse. But if you take care of your pieces, like I told you, like my earrings, they're still perfect to this day. So I think in terms of the stones, just think about, like if you're an earrings person, I would say go ahead with malachite. And even mother of pearl, as I said, people wear mother of pearl a lot as well. Don't just use the more scale as you know, the be all and end all, but it's just good to know. So next up is lapis lazuli. And you don't really see this piece that much, but it is still in the VCA's collection. And that ranks approximately a five to 5.5. I don't own anything in lapis lazuli. It's a beautiful dark blue stone. And it ranks sort of like in the middle in terms of the VCA stone. Next is turquoise. Like you guys know, I would love a magic size earring in turquoise or even a bracelet. Any, actually anything in turquoise I would love. Turquoise ranks slightly higher. Well, you could say it's about the same, but they gave it a rating of five to six. So turquoise, I think now it's only available in the sweet pendant, the sweet earrings, and even the little butterfly pieces, but all other ones are all discontinued, which I think is just a crying shame. Next up is rhodonite. Sorry guys, I totally forgot this one, but this one only ranks slightly above turquoise and it comes in at 5.5 to 6 on the Moore scale. So I wanted to include this because I do own this stone as well, though Van Cleef doesn't produce this in their regular offerings. Next up is Blue Agate and also Chalcedony. Both of them rank about 6.5 to 7. So quite hard wearing in the sense that, you know, a common object is like it's as strong as like a steel nail, take a steel nail to scratch it. So that one, and coincidentally, the Chalcedony is the next piece I'll love to add, ranks pretty high. And so I find this pretty durable. Like myself, when I've worn this, I've washed my hands. It has gotten um, wet. It hasn't been submerged in water. I haven't worn it in the shower either. But, you know, splashing some water on this is fine. And I just dry it off. So that has not changed or the stones haven't shrunk or anything. So both those stones are pretty scratch resistant as well. So before I get into the most scratch resistant stones, you will see in the chart that I haven't mentioned Gyosh or Gilshe. And I own two pieces, but did you know that 18 karat gold is actually ranks really low on the Moore scale. So this only ranks like 2.75 to three. So especially with the Gilshe, it is like if I do wear it, I don't wear it for long periods of the time. It looks beautiful, absolutely beautiful with my stack, as you can see. It does like bump up to my Cartier Love Bracelet. And 18 karat gold, that's why the Cartier Love Bracelet scratches like no tomorrow. Like it's, mine's got tons and tons of scratches, though it doesn't look like it here. But whenever you've got something with diamonds, this doesn't scratch as much because, you know, the diamonds. But underneath, it does have scratches. So both the yellow gold and the white gold Gilshe they are beautiful, beautiful pieces, but don't think that they are everyday pieces, especially with the Gilshe technique. Even microscopic dust can get into it, which is a little bit annoying, so take that into consideration. But for me, I love it so much. I love the shine. I love how it just like plays on the light. So just know 18 karat gold actually ranks quite low on the scale. Like if I was to give you an example, like my bracelets from Ideal, these ones are 14 karat gold. So 14 karat gold actually ranks a little bit higher and it's more durable. That's why it's used for everyday jewelry a lot. So these ones here, I can, especially because it's got diamonds, I can wear in the shower, everything, you can exercise in them and you don't have to take it off. So if you did want something for every day and you don't need to take off, I would recommend the hammered gold. So it is gold and it doesn't mean that it won't scratch, but you're okay to wear that in the shower. Whereas in Van Cleef Arpels doesn't recommend any of these to be worn in the shower or any activity or anything. But coming up to that point, 
The hardest in terms of the Moore scale, in terms of all the stones, Carnelian, Tiger's Eye, Onyx, which I don't own anything from Onyx. I would say that's probably the second most popular and also porcelain. So porcelain is like this. This was in Celadon porcelain, but it also can be like the limited edition Paris Vendone Sevres porcelain in that blue. They all rank about a seven. So generally speaking, anything that ranks a seven or above is pretty scratch resistant and therefore a measure of durability. So these ones here, I've had friends, especially with Carnelian uh, and Onyx, they worn some of their sweet pieces, like in the bracelets and their studs, and they were in the shower, and I've been told that they've been completely fine. Personally, I haven't worn this in the shower, so I can't comment. But just to let you know, I do have some friends that own the Onyx and the Carnelian, and they've worn it daily. But do that at your own risk, because as I said, over time, there may be longer term effects. But even when I was reading up on it, even if this is like you wear it in the shower, as long as it's not submerged for long periods of time, I think that's when it'll get its damage. But still, if you're spending so much, because these cost thousands and thousands of dollars, I wouldn't you know, like wear it in the shower. Just my own personal opinion. But I've been told that Carnelian and Onyx are fine. Let me know if you guys have worn any of your pieces in the shower and if they've been okay. But according to the official, you know, International Gem Society, where I compared this and other research, those are all the VCA stones from the least scratch resistant to the most scratch resistant. Now let's talk about price. So the prices that I'm gonna quote, I'm just gonna use the bracelets as an example, but this applies to all the Alhambra stones from necklaces to earrings and so forth. But the Mother of Pearl, this one here, and the Onyx, which I don't own, is the cheapest. So for example, in the five motif bracelet, as of current day, because there are gonna, I think they're gonna have a price increase soon, is 4,200 USD, excluding tax. The next cheapest is the hammered gold, again, which I don't own. That is $4,450. And then the next one is both the carnelian and tiger's eye and so the five motif bracelets in the carnelian and tiger's eye will cost you four thousand six hundred dollars next is blue agate blue agate is four thousand eight hundred dollars and then malachite slightly more four thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars the most expensive stone is actually chalcedony I'll put a picture up again. And that one costs $5,050. Also because it only comes in white gold, makes the price a bit more. And the final ones, which are the most expensive, are the solid 18 karat gold Gilche. The yellow gold Gilche is $5,650. But the most expensive is actually the white gold. And you will find that across the board, white gold is always slightly more expensive than yellow gold. This one will set you back 6,100 USD before tax. And I think that's due to the manufacturing process that it needs to go through. That's why white gold is always slightly more expensive than yellow gold. But yellow gold and rose gold are the same prices. So just a quick price summary of the least expensive stone to the most expensive. Okay, Mel, so then what are your recommendations? What is the best and worst stones? The reason why I wanted to go through the Moore scale was just to give you a general idea on scratchability. They don't ever recommend you to like stack all of them together because some stones are harder than the others, but of course, jewelry is to be enjoyed. So if you're careful, I think it's fine, but best bang for your buck, go for the bracelets. And honestly, go for the color that you love. Even though Mother of Pearl, as I said, is not as scratch resistant as others, it's the most popular one and I can understand why. And then if you're an earrings person, you say, well, you own so many earrings, Mel. I do, but that's because I love earrings and I know for my lifestyle, I get a lot of wear out of them. So these in terms of cost, doesn't seem as worth it. As I said, it's only like two clovers opposed to five if you're comparing like that. But for me, it's more like I wear my earrings like the most. I wear my earrings more than my bracelets. So to me, I would add more earrings and that's why I added this one. But again, if you're not an earrings person, then a lot of people love the pendants. You can see that I don't own as many pendants. 
and cost-wise, pendants are probably the least worth it to get it. But to me, it's not just based on that. So I think it's a combination. You need to ask yourself, which color suits my skin tone? Because that's one. Two, which category do I love the most? So if you ask me, if you want to play it safe, like I didn't do this first, because as I told you, I bought the malachite earrings first, but just say you're a bracelet person. If you, for example, love onyx and malachite exactly the same, I would say go the onyx as your first piece first because it's a little bit more carefree. I've known people they've worn it 24 seven and it's been fine over the malachite because malachite on your wrist or even a ring, it's sort of areas where you use your hands more or you know you wash your hands. So there's more times it may get wet and onyx is definitely more durable than malachite. Malachite's like not good with water at all. Or my first bracelet was even the carnelian. As you said, there's like four of them that rank as a seven, which is pretty scratch resistant so I would go with those stones first if you like the color however when you go to the earrings category it's not as you know a high contact with water area so maybe like if you want your first piece and you're an earring person just go the malachite that was my first or go the mother of pearl and also with earrings not only are they have less contact with water but they have less contact in terms of just say you're wearing a bracelet, it will, usually people like to stack it. And so it doesn't come in contact with your other pieces or even just, you know, when you move your hands, you might dent on the table or something. So you have to consider its end use as well. But at the end of the day, these are expensive pieces buy what you love. It's safer to go with the more hard wearing stones as your first. And then as you get used to it and everything, then you can go a colored stone. So those are my recommendations and I hope you found that table super useful. So that is it guys. I hope you enjoyed watching my full VCA collection. I hope you found that table useful. And now you can make an informed choice on what stone is suitable for your lifestyle. As I said before, the best pieces are the pieces that suit you. So even though the stone it might be a little bit more high maintenance. Like for me, I love malachite and it ranks really low. Just buy what you love because they cost a lot. So you want to make sure that you get your cost per wear. And also if you're looking for everyday pieces like ideals pieces, don't forget to click my secret link below so you get your free treasure tray and you still get 10% off your entire order, free worldwide shipping. So I'll leave that down below as well. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. As always, have a fabulous day or night and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.